Hello friends, this video on coordination compound part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay. Before we start, let's understand the concept of energy level. If you see, this is how the energy level is. 1s and 2s, there's a huge difference in energy. 2s and 2p, the two much difference. 2s, 3p, yes, there is a difference. 3s, 3p, very little difference. 3d also, very little difference. 3d and 4s, actually, there is a direct tie here. Right? Sometimes, some, in some you see, for us actually energy level is less than 3D. And these values are changing. This is not fixed. This is without any presence of electric field. But the moment you apply electric field, some ligands come, these energy level changes because the difference in energy is very small. If you see here, the difference in energy is very big. So even if it, let's suppose this changes to this much, it will always be 1s will always be smaller than 2s. But here the difference in energy is very small, right? So this, this area is a gray area. So for example, this is the shape of an atom and this is the blue one is my B orbital and the red one is my P orbital and this is my S orbital. Now when you when some electron comes here or anything comes here near, near this external uh, molecules come near to this B orbital, the energy changes because of the repulsion and we'll see that and that is the basis of the crystal thing theory. Okay. So let's start with the crystal field theory. This crystal field theory is also called electrostatic model. We'll, we'll tell you that. Electrostatic. It doesn't have some limitation, but it's better than Valence well bond theory. You don't have to uh, rely on the experimental data here. So here, it is assumed that metal is positive charge, and there is a ligand which is negative or neutral charge. And there is a bonding between the metal and ligand. It is assumed that this bonding met between metal and ligand is because of electrostatic force of attraction. And that's why it's called electrostatic one. Please note it is assumed, assumed in quote, that bonding between metal and ligands. is due to electrostatic force of attraction. Okay? That is the assumption. The second point it says is the coordination compound favors the geometry that minimizes repulsion between the electron clouds of ligands. So geometry that favors minimum ripples that is maximum stability so it, it talks in the terms of stability now the third thing is talks about in the presence of ligands the d orbital of the metal split into two states so we have seen that d orbital typically we draw something like this one two three four five all same energy but this is not the case. It splits. It splits into cases. Sometimes like this. Sometimes like this. Or sometimes even like this. Like this, right? It splits. So in presence of ligands, that's the most critical thing. In presence of ligands, degeneracy of D orbital is lost. So D genesis is this D orbital, all these three are in the same energy. The pink one, the blue one is the D orbital. All these D orbitals will be in the same energy level in the in the absence of any ligands or external field. But in the absence in the presence of ligands, this splits. We'll talk about that. The split. Okay. Now when this splits. Now the unbounded electron of the metals occupy the lower energy level because it splits. So there is a repairing because if there is a split here, it will try to form pair here. We will show you that. So because of electron splitting, there is a regrouping of electron. So in the earlier valence bond theory, we say that based on the paramagnetic or dimagnetic magnetic behavior, we used to extrapolate whether the re Rearrangement of electron will take place or not, but in this case, 
the splitting will take place and the extent of splitting will decide whether the rearrangement of electron is possible or not. Okay, that is there. We'll see that. And tendency of this electrons of the metals, this metal line, this is metal, metal to occupy the lower energy state favors maximum pairing. And the tendency of electrons of the metal to repel one another that favors high spin. I think to understand this, let, let's take one example. Let's go on understand. Let's, let's understand that fact that this look very clearly to the fact that the degeneracy of the d orbital is lost, it splits into various uh, levels, and then we'll take a call how the electrons will be arranged. Okay, and this splitting depends on ligands. So the ligands are classified as strong and weak ligands. So it has given actually the series of ligands. For example, uh, this is the series they have given: okay. F minus, OH minus, H two minus three, N two minus. C minus C. So CO is the strongest ligand here and I minus is the weakest ligand in this list. So it has given a list of what do you call it? ligands in the order of their activity or in the order of their potential to split this D orbital. So I minus will cause minimum splitting, CO will cause maximum splitting. We'll talk about this in the next slide. Okay, let's understand they are talking about splitting of d orbitals based on the ligand and they have given a order okay co will cause maximum splitting i minus will cause minimum splitting once the electron is split now when you are adding ligands the ligands will come up with electrons right so where they should be added or the already electrons of the metal should they rearrange that decision will take based on the split we'll take some examples to understand Let's take one example, crystal sulfine action. Okay, so in an isolated metal atom, all this d orbital of a given principal state, for example, I'm assuming 3d or 3d orbitals, they are in the same energy level and they are called degenerated, degenerate or degenerated orbitals in the absence of any electric or magnetic field. You see, all these five, you know, they are five d orbitals, all these five d orbitals have equal. Let's suppose this is the energy in the absence of any electric field. This is the energy level. This is the energy level, and this is without any electric field. Okay. As you go from left to right, you are adding ligands of electric field. Okay. So now what happens? Now if you see this is my d orbital, this is the actual view of d orbital. And this is the ligand, this is the ligand which is appearing, which is emerging. This one is the ligand. Okay. Please note these two are different. Don't get confused. This is my ligand. Okay. This ligand is appearing, this uh, approaching this atom. So once it is approaching, approaching, if you see the energy of this d orbital has increased. Why? If you see once again, as this ligand is approaching this particular atom. Is d orbital more repulsion take place because d orbital has electrons this ligand has electron you told that ligand is there is space it has lone pair of electrons now since this, this ligand has a lone pair of electron electron in the ligands and the electrons in the d orbital they repel each other and with that repulsion the energy of the d orbital goes up and you see as the ligand approaches the energy of the d orbital goes up and after some point then this is very close the energy of the d orbital split and split why based on the orientation i'll show you why see for example in this case if my electron is appearing from this direction okay so if it's appearing from this direction it will have impact on this it is appearing from this direction, it will have impact on d x square y square also. But if it is appearing from this direction, it will not have much impact on this because 
this orbital is not in this plane, it's not in the y plane. Similarly, it will tell us about that. Similarly, this electron will not have much impact on this orbital also, right? Because till here there is it is not even touching the orbital. Here also, in this case, also, if it's coming from here, it will not impact this orbital. So if it is coming in this y direction, let's say if it's coming in the y direction, then this electron will impact dz square and dx square minus y square orbital at the max. So that means their energy will go high. And this will not impact these three orbitals, dxy, dyz, and dz much. So their energy will go down. Similarly, if the electron is, let's suppose, coming from this direction, the x-axis. If it is coming from x-axis also, it is impacting this dz square. Yes. Is it impacting dx square, y square? Yes, because this is also in x-axis. Yes. Is it impacting dxy? No. See, dxy, there is nothing here, right? It is not even blocking. Till here, it is not even uh, uh, blocking this d orbital. But here, the moment the electron is here, it is blocking the d orbital. Right? So there is a repulsion here. In this case also, if you see, it is the electron is coming from here. No, not much repulsion. Here also not much repulsion. So, depends on the orientation. For example, let's suppose instead of that, if the electron is somehow approaching from this direction. Somewhere in the middle, not from the x, not from the y, not from the z. Somewhere in the middle. For example, it is coming from this direction. Okay, somewhere x, y. So in this case, the first thing it will hit is this guy. So it will have an impact. Okay, so it all depends because the electron can appear approached from any direction based on their geometry. If it is tetrahedral, if it is tetrahedral, something like this. So it will appear from all these directions. But if it is octahedral, if it is tetrahedral, it will, it will appear from all these directions. So, based on the approach of the ligand, the energy split will happen. So, for tetrahedral, it will have a different split. For octahedral, it will have a different split. The concept is still the same. When they are away, this d orbital is away and away from this uh, ligand, they have same energy, all these d orbitals. The moment ligand approaches, the d orbital energy increases, and after some time, when it is very near, it splits. That is again a theory. This theory is used to explain the structure. Okay, so when the metal atom gets surrounded by this ligand, the repulsion interaction between the electron ion of the ligands and the electron in the d orbital, actually because of this repulsive interaction, the energy of this d orbital increase. Okay, now please note if, the, if this field due to ligand, because this ligand is coming with a field electric field, this field due to ligand is symmetrical, then in that case, the degeneracy of the uh, higher state will be maintained, it won't break. But unluckily, in this case, when these electrons are, uh, when these ligands are hitting from different direction, they are not coming with a symmetrical, uh, what do you call, electric field. Because see, this guy will have some electric field. Each of these will have some electric field, right? There's no spherical electrical field. So if you have spherical electric field, that means there are some Let's suppose all these ligands are coming from all direction, the equal number in the form of sphere. Then in that case, the d generacy of d orbital will not be impacted, but in this case it will be impacted. Okay, the electrons are hitting from only few directions. Okay, it's not symmetrical hit. Okay, so we'll we'll see that. We'll see that. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attend free online tests, get pre-study materials find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.